Gemini. This will be a ramble regarding Gemini, the Gemini energy in general, the stream of consciousness. This is not about what it means to have sun or moon in Gemini, what it means to be in love with the Gemini. It's just the Gemini energy in general. So I started this series with Aquarius, and then I did Scorpio, Leo, Aries, and now Gemini. Gemini is my 10th house, which is the house of Capricorn. My Saturn is at 13 Gemini. It makes a very tight square to my Mercury at 14 Pisces on the 7th, the house of Libra. Mercury is my chart ruler. I have Virgo rising, a Virgo moon. My Mercury makes a lot of aspects. Um, I went to astroseek.com a couple of weeks ago, and I thought for sure Mercury would be one of my dominant planets. But as it turns out, my dominant planets are the moon, which of course is not a planet, it's a luminary, but the moon, Saturn, and Mars. Even before I could read, I loved books. A favorite gift of mine from my childhood was this big box of little golden books. I just remember my parents giving me this box filled with little golden books and I was in heaven. Whenever I went to the five and dime with my paternal grandmother in Seymour, Texas. So before the dollar store, there was the five and dime, the Ben Franklin store. That's what I would always want was a book, books. Um, I always felt like I was not smart enough. I always felt less intelligent than the people around me. I had to take speech therapy when I was in kindergarten. And I have this memory of when I was in kindergarten, or maybe it was right before kindergarten, I'm, I'm not sure. We were at this family's house, these friends, and they had this little girl who was my age, and she was reading a book in front of all of us and the adults were just so amazed because she was so smart and I remember just burning with envy because I couldn't read yet. Once I learned how to read, I was a good reader. Um, I had a better than average vocabulary, but I was extremely shy and I struggled with inferiority. I struggled in school, especially with math. I was usually pretty good at English, reading, writing. However, in first grade, another memory, um, I had to stay in during recess. And that was, that was most days. I didn't get to go to recess. I had to stay in the classroom and write my letters over and over again because I wrote my letters too large. And I remember when I learned that ball is spelled B-A-L-L, -L, I thought, that can't be right. Ball has to be B-O-L-L. -L. So wherever Saturn is in your chart, that's where you're going to face your hardest lessons. So for me, the hardest lesson of my life, I would say, has been how to communicate effectively and how to have confidence with my communication. I mean, my God, I'm 49 years old and I still struggle uh, whenever I'm doing just some basic video like this. I do multiple takes. I've never done a live and I probably won't ever do a live stream. Um, 
but the pick of cards, usually I can do the pick of cards in one take, but um, I do a lot of takes, and it's been a lot of trial and error, not just YouTube, but life in general. I started my college career at Texas State, which was Southwest Texas State at the time, 1992, San Marcos, Texas. Changed my major numerous times, English, journalism, elementary education, theater arts. Um, so I dropped out, went back, dropped out, finally graduated from college at the age of 43, 44, it was in 2016, I graduated from UTSA. I got my Bachelor of Arts in English with a creative, with a concentration in creative writing. So at its highest vibration, I would say that Gemini is intellectually strong, intellectually advantaged, really good at communication, confidence with communication. Gemini is really good at being glib, at keeping things light. Gemini is a master at flirting. Gemini can pick up any language, any instrument. Now this is me thinking of a specific Gemini. He wasn't a Gemini. He had he was a Leo, but he had Mars and Moon in Gemini. This man I'm thinking of, a man I regard as a soulmate, the man who inspired my novel, Bullshit Rodeo. He had Sun and Mercury in Leo, and he had Mars and Moon in Gemini, and he was the most brilliant person I ever met. Um... He could speak different languages. Um, he could play any instrument. Um, one of the best weeks of my life, which that week was what led to me writing my novel, Bullshit Rodeo, a week with this man in Santa Cruz, San Francisco, and Ben Loman, June 2010. Um, we were at this art gallery in Santa Cruz, for this little impromptu poetry reading and he asked me to join him on the piano and he played Ruby Tuesday by the Rolling Stones and we sang together. And then later at his place on the mountain in Ben Loman, um, he was playing this song on his piano and I said, I love that song, what is that called? And he said, it's called Silver Shoes. I later found out he got the title wrong. It was uh, Brass Buttons by Graham Parsons. And he sat me down at his computer and he said, this is the song that reminds me of you. And it was To Ramona by Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan's a Gemini. And I never can remember with Saturn and Gemini squaring Mercury and Pisces. I'm always doubting myself. I'm always doubting my intellectual capabilities and my memory. I can never remember if the title of that song is to Ramona or for Ramona, but it's a beautiful, bittersweet, poignant love song. Um, I always felt challenged whenever I was on the phone with this man, and I talk about him in the, uh, the Leo ramble. So he made a huge impact on my life. Um, he would call, and I immediately felt like a schoolgirl. He just had this larger-than-life personality, and he was brilliant, and he was a master at conversation, and so I always felt inept. Um, 
I fell in love with this man when I read his first poetry collection, The Journals of Hell. I sent him this email, this schoolgirl crushing starry-eyed email, and he was gracious enough to respond. And there was an Elvis reference, and I forget why we bonded over Elvis, but he out elvis me because I told him that I had been to Graceland once. And he said, I've been to Graceland three times. So I'm looking forward to seeing the Elvis movie. I'm sure that I will cry. Um, but he just, he lived this very colorful life. He lived in Japan. He lived in Thailand. He lived in Italy. He was from Oakland, Oakland, California. He lived all over and I asked him once, I said, of all the places you've lived, what felt most like home to you? And he said, New Orleans. And he writes about his time in New Orleans and his novel, Swamp. Swamp, The Urinals of Hell. Stumpfucker, Cavalcade, and Geek City Apocalypso. His books are all at Amazon. He drank himself to death in a San Francisco motel room, July 2017. And it was funny, right after he died, I dreamed that we were together in bed, and it was the morning, and he said, let's go get some bacon-wrapped donuts. And I had heard about bacon-wrapped donuts, but I'd never had one. And I told our mutual friend about the dream, and he said, oh my God, whenever we worked the flea market circuit together, they went to these flea markets and um, Northern California and sold stuff. He always wanted to get bacon wrapped donuts for breakfast. <laughs> so um, his Pluto was conjunct to my moon in Virgo, tight. I've experienced that with two different men and they both inspired novels. So Pluto conjunct moon ain't nothing to fuck with. Um, my mom is a Gemini, and her third and final husband is a Gemini. I'm pretty sure they both regard each other as the love of each other's lives. They met when they were in their middle age in 1999, 1998. They got married in 1999. Um, and the energy just changes dramatically whenever they come to visit because we're a fixed household, meaning I'm an Aquarian, my ex is a Leo, and our son is a Scorpio. And we live a pretty calm, quiet life. When my mom and her husband come to visit, it's go here, go here, go here. We call it the Gemini tornado. We're actually going to visit them at their home next week. And they have a pool in the backyard, and my mom's husband has this building. It was um, uh, a shop, a, a storage space. He turned it into like a man cave. So he's got a bar in there, and some old car that he's worked on or something. I don't know, but there's always something going on with those two. They always go to Canton. They love to go to Canton to go shopping once a month, and they're just always out doing things. Um, so, yeah, me having my Saturn in Gemini in the 10th house. I feel restricted. I feel challenged when it comes to communication. Uh, a Gemini X, we met at OkCupid okay June 2016. And I fell for him right away. Well, in his profile picture, he reminded me of Evan Stone, my favorite porn actor. Um, 
I don't watch much porn, but I saw this hilarious Fred Owen Ray porn in 2008, and it was starring Evan Stone, and I just fell in love with it. That guy's crazy. He's hilarious. Evan Stone's a cancer. But uh, he looked like Evan Stone. Goes with a teeny bikini or some shit. Some goofy horror slash porno. It's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, I like that he reminded me of Evan Stone. And so I don't usually do this, but I think that I actually messaged him first. And we started talking, and he could speak fluent German, and that turned me on. And so we were just messaging and then texting fast and furious. We talked on the phone. I liked his voice. Uh, we had our first date, and then I moved in with him shortly after the first date. And I liked the sex because we were connected during the sex. There's not always connection, but, you know, there was warmth, there was heat, there was eye contact, and there was talking. And I liked that. Uh, but then once I moved in with them, I was at home all day and he was at work. He had to commute to San Antonio from New Braunfels. And he didn't text as much and I didn't like it and I told him, you know, I require a lot of communication. He said, well, we live together now. So that was no bueno. We had a lot of issues, but um, I take communication pretty seriously. And that's absolutely a deal breaker for me. I cannot be in an intimate relationship with a man. I can't be in love with a man who sucks at communicating. He has to be really good at it. He has to have integrity with his communication, and he has to be honest. So no seven of swords bullshit. Um, I, I can't dance to that. I have to be with someone that I trust, and there has to be consistent, lively, invigorating, stimulating communication. The whole sexting thing is really lost on me. I mean, I've participated. I had phone sex in the 90s. Um, and I've done sexting as recently as last year at fucking Instagram. But after the last situation, <laughs> I said, okay, that's it for me. I'm hanging up the spurs. I am too old for dick pics. I'm too old for casual. I'm too old for any triangulation. Fuck the third party stuff. Can't do it. Can't dance to that. So, the man who was the catalyst for me starting Siren Taro was actually a Gemini. Was, is, he could be alive, he could be dead, I have no idea. Um, we met online in 2014. We had one date. We were going to meet up again. He flaked on me. Um, then in 2017, late spring, early summer, just out of the blue, he sends me an email. So we started talking again, and then we met in person the second and final time, February 2018. Um, I took my golden tarot deck, Cat Black's golden tarot, and I had him rub his hands together and put his hands on the card, and I pulled one card, and it was the emperor. And I thought there for a while, I went down the rabbit hole, I thought, oh, he's my divine masculine, because there was all kinds of weird mental telepathy. Uh, in this one dream, I saw him clear as day. We were at this hill country wedding, and he was wearing a cowboy hat, and I called him Gemini Cowboy. And I called out in the dream, I said, Gemini Cowboy, I need you, call me. I woke up that morning to a missed phone call from the guy and text messages. So there was always something like that. Um, and so that twin flame journey, as is so often the case apparently, is what led to me starting Siren Taro November 18, 2018. And I was on the twin flame journey for a while. I thought about getting coaching and then I thought, no, I just, I, I can't. So I'm not sure what I even think about the whole twin flame thing, 
so I can't really speak to it. I get the occasional client who says, is this my person? Is this, is this person my twin flame? I have no idea. You know, I can tell you what the cards say and you see certain cards and you say, okay, that's your twin flame. And I think that's really overdone. Oh, there's 11, 11. There's the four of wands. There's the emperor. There's the empress. There's the two of cups. Yeah, you're definitely twin flames. Okay. Well, what does that mean? What do you do with that information? So that's what I'm talking about. I take communication and education seriously. Uh, I consider myself an amateur. I consider myself a lifelong student. I am surrounded by books. I've got books on the floor by my bed. I've got books in the bookcase. I've got books in the den in bookcases. I've got books and boxes in the garage. Uh, I still want to learn how to play the guitar. I've been saying that for decades. I still want to learn how to speak fluent Spanish. I've been saying that for decades. The epitome of the Gemini energy is Audrey Hepburn and Breakfast at Tiffany's. So that's what I have for Gemini. I hope this elucidates. hope this entertains. Thanks for listening. Peace out.